Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to Church Online this morning. It's great to be able to welcome you here. Uh, my name is Matt Hurst, and I'm the lead minister here at K Street, and it's my privilege to be able to lead you through uh, this morning's act of worship. A little bit later on in the service, our associate minister, Johnny, will be bringing God's word to us and kind of helping us to think around this whole area of covenant and what it means to covenant together as God's people. Friends, there are many different expressions of covenant throughout Scripture. And one of those covenant expressions is the covenant that God made with Abraham. And John is going to be developing that theme a little bit later and helping us to think around that. So just excited about having you with us, welcoming you here. And with it being Covenant Sunday, um, you know, there's a, there's a sense of, of kind of sadness as well that we can't share this together physically in this building. That's how we've been used to doing it. But as we've said so many times, God is not limited by a building or time or space. And he will be with us and he will connect us in our homes or wherever you're watching this online this morning. As we, as we speak some very important words to God and to each other about what we want to be going forward as a church. And I just think the timing of this service is utterly crucial to where we are as a church right now. So just looking forward to sharing this service with you this morning. Um, you'll be pleased to know, just have two uh, notices to share with you. The first is just a notice that I'm really excited about giving, and that's at the, the church meeting last Tuesday. There was a unanimous call uh, to uh, appoint Susie Elkington as our family and children's worker, subject, of course, to the necessary uh, DBS checks. Um, and once all those checks have gone through, uh, Susie will commence here uh, as our family and children's worker. Just, I cannot tell you how excited I am, uh, not just for Susie, but for you as a fellowship as well. Susie comes with kind of just so many ideas, and uh, but also a real teachability and a, and a humble heart as well to learn going forward. So I just, I believe, friends, it's going to be an exciting partnership. Um, and please, please remember uh, Susie in your prayers as she prepares uh, for this new role. The other notice that I have uh, is to do with the START course, and I mentioned this last week. Uh, it's a six-week course starting on Monday the 8th of February. It's aimed at anyone, okay? So it's not just for people within the church, it's for people outside the church, people who have been Christians for some time, people who are you know, perhaps connecting with church for the first time and wanting to go deeper in their faith. If you would like to know more about this course, then please email jmorris at jmorris at catuk.org. That's jmorris at catuk.org. Okay, and it starts on Monday the 8th of February and will run for six weeks. It's a fantastic course and really encourage you uh, to connect in with that course if you are able to. Okay, so I mentioned at the beginning, today is our covenant service. And I'd like to read another expression of covenant in Scripture. And this really is a, a covenant that's foretelling the future. This is the new covenant. This is the new covenant that we get to enjoy now, where a relationship with God is not just written on tablets of stone, but just written on our hearts, that we can know Jesus as friend and Lord and Saviour. And Jeremiah is foretelling a time when that just amazing dream will become a reality. So it's Jeremiah 31, uh, verses 31 to 34. The time is coming, declares the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant I made with their forefathers when I took them by the hand to lead them out of Egypt, because they broke my covenant, though I was a husband to them, declares the Lord. This is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after that time, declares the Lord. I will put my law in their minds and write it on their hearts. I will be their God and they will be my people. No longer will a man teach his neighbour or a man his brother say, Know the Lord, because they will all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, declares the Lord. 
for I will forgive their wickedness and I will remember their sins no more. They're just wonderful words. I will be their God and they will be my people. You know, and the fact that we can just know God and not just know all about God. There's such a massive difference between head knowledge and knowing him in your heart. And I pray that this morning through our songs of worship, through Johnny opening up the word of God, that we will just be drawn closer to each other but to him as we seek to know him more. So let's pray together. Father God, we still our hearts before you. We welcome you here, Jesus. Thank you that you're here by your spirit. You're here in this building here at church and you're here in the homes of every single person watching online this morning, wherever they're watching it from. Thank you, Lord, that we are connected as part of the family of God. And I pray, Lord, that your your spirit will unite us together as one this day. God, we take the words that we're going to speak to you later really seriously but also recognise that we can't utter them, Lord, without the power of your Spirit giving us the strength to do that. So, Father, lead us through today. Bless Johnny, God, as he opens up your word. Thank you for all the preparation that he's put into bringing this message this morning. Inspire him. And, Father, we pray that this act of worship will please your heart, Father God, this day. And we ask that you will be glorified through all that we do. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. Come on, Lord, have your way. So we're going to sing together, and I can say that because we can sing. We can sing in our homes. We can sing with gusto. We're going to sing two songs now, Our Father Everlasting, a song that picks up on really the creed. What is our faith? You know, what do we actually believe? And then we're going to follow up by, by singing about God being our hope and our cornerstone. So if you could watch uh, the screen, please. Thank you.
Let's pray together as we reflect upon those words that we've just sung. That Christ is our cornerstone. That he is our hope and our salvation. And that through every high, through every storm and every gale, he is Lord of all. Jesus, we bring you our worship and our praise this morning. We bring it to the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, the only one who is worthy of our worship. And we surrender God to you this morning. We thank you that in the midst of everything that's going on right now, you are our hope. Thank you that you don't change, Lord, that you're the same yesterday, today and forever. And God, I pray you'll fill us right now with your hope. Fill us with your love, God. Empower us by your spirit. To see the opportunities, God, that you are still giving us day by day. Thank you for expressions of hope that we see in our church, in our community. As we turn on our television screens, as we read our newspapers. God, you are still at work. You are not limited by a pandemic. And I give you thanks for that. And God, one of the things that's really been on my heart recently is how as your people we might still continue to grow in you that we might deepen our faith with you, Lord, so that when you do lead us out, we are ready, God, we are ready, better equipped to serve you. So, Father, thank you for the reminder of that song, that our hope is in you alone, Christ alone, cornerstone. And as we continue in prayer, friends, I want to use some words around a covenant theme. So as we think about the words of covenant that we will speak a little bit later, we continue our prayers, creating and redeeming God. We give you thanks and praise. Your covenant of grace was made for our salvation in Jesus Christ our Lord. We come this day to covenant with you and with our companions in discipleship, to watch over each other and to walk together before you in ways known and still to be made known. Pour down your spirit on us. Help us so to walk in your ways, God, that the promises we make today and the life that we live together may become an offering of love our duty and our delight, truly glorifying to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. This day we give ourselves to you and to each other, to be bound together in fellowship and to work together in the unity of the Spirit for the sake of God's mission, not just in Rossendale, but across the world. And we bring our prayers to this amazing God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We're going to sing again uh, a song which kind of picks up on, on Jesus being Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. It's entitled King of Kings. Fulfill the law and prophets to a virgin came the word from 
from a throne of endless glory to a cradle in the dust. Praise the Father, praise the Son, praise the Spirit, three in one. God of glory, majesty, praise forever to the King of Kings. To reveal the kingdom coming and to reconcile the lost, to redeem the whole creation. Till the stone was moved for good, for the Lamb had conquered death. And the dead rose from their tombs, and the angels stood in awe. For the souls of all who come to the Father are restored. And the church of Christ was born, then the Spirit lit the flame. Now this gospel truth of all shall not be and shall not face By His blood and in His name, in His freedom I am free For the love of Jesus Christ who has resurrected me Wonderful. Before um, Johnny comes to bring God's word to us, we have two readings. So if you could turn to Genesis chapter 12, uh, verses 1 to 5, and then just a few chapters on in chapter 15, verses 1 to 6. So Genesis 12, 1 to 5, and then Genesis 15, verses 1 to 6. God promises a nation to Abraham. The Lord has said to Abraham, leave your country, your people, and your father's household, and go to the land I will show you. I will make you into a great nation, and I will bless you. I will make your name great, and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and whoever curses you, I will curse, and all peoples on earth will be blessed through you. So Abraham left as the Lord had told him, and Lot went with him. Abraham was 75 years old when he set out from Haran. He took his wife Sarai, his nephew Lot, 
all the possessions they had accumulated and the people they had acquired in Haran, and they set out for the land of Canaan, and they arrived there. And then just a few chapters on in Genesis chapter 15, verses 1 to 6. After this, the word of the Lord came to Abraham in a vision. In a vision, Do not be afraid, Abraham. I am your shield, your very great reward. But Abraham said, O sovereign Lord, what can you give me since I remain childless? And the one who will inherit my estate is Eliza of Damascus. And Abraham said, You have given me no children, so a servant in my household will be my heir. Then the word of the Lord came to him. This man will not be your heir, but a son coming from your own body will be your heir. He took him outside and said, look up at the heavens and count the stars. If indeed you can count them. Then he said to him, so shall your offspring be. Abraham believed the Lord and he credited it to him as righteousness. And we give thanks to God for his word to us. Let's pray for Johnny now as he comes. God, thank you for your servant, Johnny. God, thank you for the words that you've put on his heart. Just bless him abundantly now, God. Holy Spirit, fill him, inspire him. Pray the words that he speaks will be words in season for us right now, right now in this place. And so bless him, Lord, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning, good morning to you, welcome. Uh, It's good to be with you this morning. And uh, yeah, as Matt has introduced so well today, we are thinking about um, covenant as we explore this theme throughout the Bible. Actually, what we're doing today is is, is just touching on on what a a much bigger, wider biblical theme is in, uh, in, in covenant relationship, covenant promise that God has come has not remained distant but has come close to us uh, and has incredibly made promises with us Uh, and we're going to reflect on one of those this morning a major one uh, uh, but just one of those in the bible uh, today and I'd like to begin by saying how interested are you in family trees I know there's been a, a surge in interest in recent years on telly as people watch uh, Who Do You Think You Are? You know, and we, we, we're fascinated by celebrities' lives and seem to somehow feel drawn into their lives and their family and their heritage. Uh, and then, <laughs> you know, and we don't know uh, them. Um, uh, and there was a, a program on, program on uh, was it last year, uh, Danny Dyer, as he found out that his, <laughs> his family tree is of royal descent and uh, he, <laughs> he, he then played on that very much, and I'm sure you can imagine the kind of uh, character, with the character he is, uh, the kind of uh, <laughs> way the programme went. Uh, quite funny. Uh, some years ago, my dad uh, really got into researching our own family tree, and I'm, I think this is something that happens as you get older. Um, you, you become suddenly interested in something that seems so boring and archaic, uh, before and but I, to be honest, you know, as I, as I actually saw the, the what he'd done with this, uh, I was fascinated uh, with it. And I've just got a very small part of our family tree here. It won't make any sense to you. This is part of my family. This is my maternal uh, family tree. This is my my mother's line. And, and actually, even now, it's it's out of date. It only goes up to I think two thousand and two. And and our family at the bottom right hand side of this picture has grown significantly since then. But you know, this only goes back uh, three or four generations here. Um, but it's fascinating seeing. Oh, I had no idea that these people are related to me. Look at you know just. Look, there's faces, there's, there's history, there's story there. I wonder what their characters were like. I wonder what they were like to speak to. I don't know most of the people on, on this family tree, yet they are a part of my story. It's fascinating. But that's my family tree, or at least part of it. And it makes no sense to you, probably holds a, 
very little interest to you. So let me talk a little bit more this morning about your family tree. Uh, And it's an ancient oak (laughs) with roots that stretch down thousands of years. And we go back, way back, thousands of years to a uh, to a man named, named Abram, who had his own family tree, his own genealogy. A man who, in some way, is father to us all. And Abram, as a character, as a person, well, he's an interesting one because he was a desert wanderer, a nomadic traveller, who knew the life of moving and settling camp in different places, along with his family. Ah, what a, what a character to have known, to have met. I wonder what he would have been like to talk to. But then one day, soon after his father died, and we might assume that he was a man who liked to chase after the things of this world, the Lord spoke to Abram and told him to, to leave his father's homeland and go with his family to a place God was preparing for them. So Abraham, probably from a family tree that, that spreads back to it, an ancient place we, we see come up a lot in the Bible called Babylon or Babylonia, that kind of area. He leaves, goes north, and then God speaks to him and tells him to go southwest from, from where he was living. <clears throat> and on the basis of that word, that promise from God, he leaves his homeland And he goes uh, where God has sent him. So just like that, at the age of 75 years, Abraham leaves his home, everything he has known, on a promise. How does that sound to you? That's quite a step of faith. How do you consider your place in, world, in this world at the minute? Do you consider yourself perhaps too old to be used for God's purposes? Or do you expect that God has got more in mind for your life still? Abraham had to do a lot of waiting, so much so that naturally, well, he began to doubt what God had promised. And as we see this story, and it, it's, it's fascinating reading this this story through Genesis. It's not very long if you want to read all of, all of Abraham's story uh, in this middle part of, of this book, um, the first book in our Bibles. Um, he began to doubt God's promise, but God reassured him once again, a little time later, by telling him to look up at the stars. Look up at the stars, Abram. Count them if you can. That's how big your family's going to be. That's how many children, grandchildren, great-grandchildren you're going to have. <laughs> what? Chuckles, Abram. How ridiculous. I'm 75. I'm an old man. I don't have any children. But that's not Abram's response. Abram, it says, believe God. And God credited Abram's faith as righteousness. A phrase that will come up again and again when we think about Abram's personality, his character, his faith. And so God there makes an unconditional covenant promise with Abram by passing well, this is a strange bit. By, it says, by passing through the carcasses of sacrificed animals. That what, that's what happens in the reading, uh, if you follow on the reading from Genesis 15, that, that part just after Matt read uh, for us this morning. There's this strange account of, of uh, Abraham preparing a sacrifice. And this, is, and this is a kind of weird thing, especially if you're a vegetarian or vegan, uh, to understand really what's going on here. Why would you sacrifice some animals and then walk through the middle of them? But that's, that's what Abraham did. He sacrificed his animals. He stood back and in a vision, he saw God walk through this sacrifice. 
Now, that is a bit random until we realise, actually, that that is a, a known practice at this time. Thousands of years ago, if you wanted to make a binding promise with somebody, you would make a sacrifice, and sacrifices are costly, always. That's the point. That's why they're a sacrifice. Here, in this case, it's of, uh, of, of animals. Uh, a heifer, uh, as it says here in Genesis uh, 15. This was a known practice at the time. And what's going on here, um, it confirmed the solemnity of this covenant promise. In effect, God was making an oath with Abraham that said, I'm so serious about the promise I've made to you. Remember that promise? I'm going to bless you and you'll be a blessing to all people. Your descendants will be as numerous as the stars in the sky, the sand on the earth. I'm so serious about this promise that may the same be done to me if I do not keep this oath or the, and, and pledge. As in, may the same sa- that's been sacrificed here, may the same happen to me if I do not keep my promise here. Can you even imagine the immensity of that moment? That the God who created the universe, who created those stars that Ab- that, that um, Abraham looked up at would be willing to even suggest that he would lay down his own ex- very existence to, to fulfill a promise if it was broken, to bless this Middle Eastern man in a desert in this way. Don't let anyone tell you that God is distant and aloof that he isn't involved and invested in this world and in his beloved creation if he's ever willing to make a promise like this. So then, a little time later, at the age of 99, and I'm sure he'll be well in the category of getting the vaccine by now, God appeared to Abraham again and confirmed his promise of blessing Again, with a binding agreement. A, this time, it's a covenant. It's part of that co- unconditional covenant he's made with Abraham. But this time, he makes a conditional covenant of loyalty with Abraham. Conditional. So that means that, that this covenant will only hold together based on the conditions of it. And so, I'm going to read now uh, from Genesis 17, a little bit further on in the story. Genesis 17, verses 1 to 14 says, When Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to him and said, I am God Almighty. Walk before me faithfully and be blameless. Then I will make my covenant between me and you and will greatly increase your numbers. Abram, doing all that he could do, fell face down. And God said to him, As for me, this is my covenant with you. You will be the father of many nations. No longer will you be called Abram. (coughs) Abram. Sorry, your name will be Abraham. Ah, okay. So this sounds like a more familiar name to us. For I have made you a father of many nations. See the subtle change there and the significance of a name. I will make you very fruitful. I will make nations of you and kings will come from you. I will establish my covenant as an everlasting covenant between me and you and your descendants after you and uh, after you for the generations to come to be your God and the God of your descendants after you. The whole land of Canaan, where you now reside as a foreigner, I will give you as an everlasting possession to you and your descendants after you. And I will be their God. You see, what a great deal Abraham is given here. He's given a name. He's given a promise. He's given a family. And and this family will become a nation. He's given a land. Wow. Then God said to Abraham, As for you, you must keep my covenant. Ah, okay, here we're seeing the conditions come in. You and your descendants after you for the generations to come. And this is my covenant with you and your descendants after you. The covenant you are to keep, every male among you shall be circumcised. Oh, 
This was sounding like a good deal until right now. (laughs) You are to undergo circumcision, and it will be the sign of the covenant between me and you. For the generations to come, every male among you who is eight days old must be circumcised, including those born in your household or brought or bought with money from a foreigner, those uh, who are not your offspring. Okay, so family and not family coming into this covenant now. Whether born in your household or bought with uh, your money, they must be circumcised. My covenant in your flesh is to be an everlasting covenant. Any uncircumcised male who has not been circumcised in the flesh will be cut off from his people. He has broken my covenant. So what we see here then is a conditional covenant. God is making extraordinary promises to this man and to his family, to his descendants. But... There has to be a sacrifice. There has to be a sign that you, the the human party in this covenant, are serious about making this promise with me. I want to bless you, says God. But I want you to be invested in this blessing too. And so the sign for that was circumcision. And when Abraham was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to him again. That's what, that's what we've uh, just said. So 75-year-old man, now a 99-year-old man, was given, again, the promise of an everlasting covenant between him and God. And as with most covenants, it means that if this covenant is broken, a price has to be paid. For uncircumcised, unconsecrated believers, it meant that it, they were cut off from being part of God's community. With this, with this covenant, there are those who are in and those who are out, insiders and outsiders. And there's the boundary line. And circumcision was the mark of God's holy people. Circumcision was an act of loyalty to God and his covenant of blessing. But I told you this morning that this is about your family tree. So how is this promise given to Abraham, (laughs) this promise, uh, this ancient promise, which starts talking about surgical procedures on men, how is it a promise to you? Well, this is where we turn from one end of our Bibles to another, and there's a whole lot of story in between this, okay? But a few thousand years of history later, we come to the time of Jesus, who himself, born as a baby, was taken to the temple at eight days old for this ceremony we've just heard about, to be consecrated, to become part of the community of God, to hold to the human part of this covenant And in this promise, in this baby, we see an extension of this promise given to Abraham, now given to the whole world. And this is where the Apostle Paul talks to a new Judeo-Christian church in Galatia. You know, a church that's made up of both Jews and Gentiles who are now both receiving, coming into this promise, and where Paul is arguing the merit of faith over the law. And we see in this, uh, in this short letter, uh, this short book we have in our Bibles, Galatians, we see that those uh, who are righteous are those who live not by the law, but by faith. And this was a huge debate amongst Jews and Gentiles at the time, as they begin to readjust to the new covenant that has been made in Jesus and we'll talk about that in a minute and our continued faith today we are part as our continued faith today we are part of God's covenant promise so let me read to you from Galatians chapter 3 verses uh, 6 to 14 if you're following in your own Bibles at home and this is commentary on Abraham that Paul is writing Abraham believed God and it was credited to him as righteousness Remember, we read that 
at the, uh, in Genesis 15. Understand then, Paul continues and argues, that those who have faith are children of Abraham. Scripture foresaw that God would justify the Gentiles by faith, Gentiles being non-Jews, n- those who were initially were not part of that covenant made to Abraham in the nation of Israel, and announced the gospel in advance to Abraham. Think about that for a second. We talk about the gospel as the point where Jesus came, and it is the, the account, the good news of Jesus' life. But here Paul is saying this gospel in some way was announced to Abraham. Expand your thinking on what the gospel is. And go back to that promise made thousands of years ago, right at the beginning of our Bibles. In Genesis 12, that God chooses to bless us. And here... uh, as Paul is saying, he announced, uh, God announced uh, the gospel in advance to Abraham. All nations will be blessed through you. And those who rely on faith are blessed along with Abraham, the man of faith. For all who rely on the works of the law are under a curse. As it is written, cursed is everyone who does not continue to do everything written in the book of the law. Clearly, no one who relies on the law is justified before God because the righteous will live, not by the law, it says, but by faith. The law was not based on faith. On the contrary, it says the person who does these things will live by them. Listen to this. Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us. For it is written, cursed is anyone who is hung on a pole, referring to Jesus being hung on the cross. And he redeemed us in order that the blessing given to Abraham thousands of years ago might come to the Gentiles. That's even us today, you and me, through Christ Jesus, so that by faith we might receive the promise of the Spirit. Well, if you think 75 isn't that old anymore, Abraham had to wait until he was 100 years old until he finally saw God fulfill the promise he made to him. And his wife bore a beloved son, Isaac. Talk about trusting God in the wilderness place, and that's what we're trying to do this term as we recognise we are journeying through a tough time at the minute. It feels a bit like a wilderness. We've looked at the, the stories of, of David's trusting God, of, of Elijah's trusting God, of, of Jonah's trusting God. Today we're talking about this desert wanderer, this wilderness wanderer, Abraham and his trusting God. This was the archetype, the man to look at when we look at faith. Yes, he doubted. Yes, he struggled. Yes, he definitely got it wrong. But God credited his faith, not his law, not the way that he acted, but his faith as righteousness. And here we see the beginning of Abraham's family tree. Here's a a short picture of it. Now, you may not recognize your name here just yet. In fact, this, this tree here only goes back as far as five generations. But from here, we see the beginning of a holy and chosen nation begin. And if you're if, if you're not entirely sure how characters in the Bible, certainly in, in, in Genesis and the Old Testament, fit together, just see some of these names here. Abraham, who married uh, Sarah. They had Isaac, who married Rebekah. They had Jacob, whose name became Israel. And God gave him that name, Israel. And through his uh, sons became the foundation of a nation, the 12 tribes of Israel. And we can, we can sketch that through the story, the narrative of the Bible. 
In fact, when we get to the New Testament, right at the beginning, we see a family tree outlined. And that family tree goes all the way back to Abraham. And it finishes in, at the beginning of the gospel with a newborn son called Jesus. So a covenant shared began to grow and a nation came. As large as the nation grew, it fulfilled and populated. It became a greater and new covenant. A covenant shared through the cross of Christ. You see, our, our Bibles are split into two major parts. Uh, we call them the Old Testament and the New Testament. Actually, uh, a good name for them would be <clears throat> the Old Covenant shared between God and his people Israel who are all supposed to be working towards the next part, the new covenant shared now amongst the people of faith all around the world, people known as the church, the assembly, the congregation of Jesus Christ, which we hear we put our faith in Jesus as a part of. Now, from our reading in Galatians, we understand that God didn't make Abraham righteous because of his actions. Abraham was righteous, a righteous man, because he believed God would fulfill his promise, no matter how impossible it sounded. So Galatians uh, 3, 7 again says, Understand then that those who believe are children of Abraham. Perhaps not blood relatives of Abraham, but relatives because we trust in the blood of Christ. We are justified and called children of God, not because of our actions, but because of our faith in God's actions. Therefore, we bear the fruit of the promise of blessing, a blessing given to Abraham today. We are that blessing. And we are blessed by God's promise. We are deemed righteous by God if we live by faith. And therefore we become God's heirs who are chosen and dearly loved. How is this even possible? It is all because of Christ Jesus and his death on the cross, which has redeemed us from the curse of sin. The curse which was only highlighted by the law. From the jaws of death, Christ has rescued and redeemed us. And your life has been bought as at a significant price by God, so that through faith, you can be called a child of God. Brothers and sisters, together in his church, the new covenant community. And so then again, at the end of that reading from Galatians we read, it says, he redeemed us in order that the blessing given to Abraham might come to the Gentiles, that's you and me, through Christ Jesus, so that by faith we might receive the promise of the Spirit who is here to be our help and guide. So I want to ask you this question today, in light of all of that. How is your faith today? Walking in this wilderness time, how is your faith today? Are you feeling faithful? Are you Choosing to act based on your faith in Jesus. Could you, for example, like Abraham, wait 25 years, even into old age, for your deepest longings to, to come true, to be filled? Could you wait that long on a promise that you thought you heard from God? And then... Consider this, what is God promising to us? What does he have in store for our community in this little corner of the world, in this barren desert of Lancashire's loneliness and poverty? 
and where we uh, and where are the signs that God is fulfilling his promises of his coming kingdom in a, in among us what is God promising to us well, if we look carefully enough, I believe that God is working his promises among us. I believe that the kingdom of God is being built in and around us. The faith-filled heirs of Abraham's covenant. You are blessed today in the promise that we've just read. And we, have, and we are here as a result of that promise that was given to Abraham. And the byproduct of that blessing is naturally the church, the people of God who gather together to share in covenant relationship with God and with each other. We are no longer marked by circumcision, thank God, but more significantly and more costly by the blood of Jesus. We are no longer marked by the scar of our body, but by the scar of God's body who hung on the cross. Oh, that was the unconditional promise of God. And even when we broke the covenant, God has still fulfilled it through his son. That is the beauty and the blessing of the new covenant made in Jesus. And today we recognise God's call to share that blessing in all who believe. Today we are blessed to be a blessing. That is this message. We are blessed to be a blessing in this world, to share in the love of the Father who desires that all people may be saved, as the New Testament shows us. Two, two Sundays ago we celebrated and shared the sign of this new covenant as we partook in communion and we do regularly as the new covenant covenant community of God the Lord's Supper <clears throat> in a moment we're going to share in another sign of this as we are to make our church covenant together once again and the promises we make today are in light of the great covenant that God the Father has made with us through his son meaning that we now have the gift of his Holy Spirit And here's a picture. Remember this mighty oak that stretches, whose root stretches down through centuries. Roots that, that are found in a promise given to a desert wanderer. And a tree, a family tree that grows out, grows strong, grows big. And whose branches are fulfilled today whose fruit are fulfilled through that promise. Here's a picture that I uh, used to, uh, once to illustrate our church community that I was a part of last, in light of the biblical story that we've just heard. That, and that community was with, a deep, with, was with these deep roots, with a great genealogy, an awesome family tree, a promise of being blessed in order that we can be a blessing in this world. The leaves that you can see on this tree are fingerprints. They are fingerprints of a covenant of community, making a sign of family covenant together. And I offer this picture to you today as a sign of what we're doing today as we make these promises to one another. And so, what is the covenant that we're, going to, we're about to make well, hopefully, if you've been a part of our church for a while, you'll be familiar to the words that we're about to share. But I just want to outline them very briefly before we speak them so that we can give them deep meaning together. And firstly, we are promising to be obedient to the vision that God has given to us. And we are promising to be a church that witnesses and proclaims Jesus Christ as Saviour and Lord. We are promising to be a church that grows in discipleship under God's word. We are a church that promises to pray and practice the habits of prayer personally and collectively. We are promising to be a church that cares in which it, in which it practices love and forgiveness. We are promising to be a church that seeks vision and discernment 
from God's spirit at work within us and this world. And a church that serves out of its God-given gifts. And finally, a church that grows in the unity of the spirit through Jesus Christ our Lord. And I believe this morning that I want to sum all of this up, that we can say that all of this means that we are blessed to be a blessing. We are blessed to be a blessing. So may you know today God's blessing on you as you seek to bless others as we walk together this journey of discipleship to call others to Jesus, to be brought into this covenant blessing today. Amen. I'm going to invite uh, Matt back up uh, now and, uh, and we're going to now share in this covenant together, Matt. Thank you, Johnny, for your uh, words to us this morning. Uh, this morning, sadly, for the first time, uh, we cannot all be together in this room to share in the covenant together as we've been used to. But I, I want to say this this morning, that I hope that if you consider yourself as someone who is part of this church and willing to walk in this journey of discipleship with us, that you will make this covenant with us this morning and you will feel able to make this covenant with us this morning if you are signing in for the first time you're joining us online for the first time you're just exploring faith and you don't feel comfortable saying these words or you don't feel you're able to say them then that is absolutely fine that is your prerogative and I don't want to pressure you in any way shape or form but if you do feel a part of this fellowship and you are able to say these words with us, then we welcome you to do so now. Johnny and I will speak the words out of the covenant, which will be on the screen, um, and we will speak them out alternately together so that we both lead this uh, section together. So why don't we say the words of the covenant? Johnny has explained in detail just the importance of what it means to make a covenant to each other, and more importantly, a covenant to our God. So the words are on the screen and we say them together. Trusting in Jesus Christ as Saviour and confessing him as Lord, we covenant together to walk with God in all his ways, made known or to be made known, and in all the responsibilities and privileges of church fellowship and worship, service and witness. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Heavenly Father, we pray for this fellowship, that we, your people, may be obedient to the vision you have given us. May we be a witness in church where Jesus Christ is proclaimed as Saviour and Lord. A growing church where the community of God's people are discipled and encouraged and the word of God is studied with expectation and taught with relevance. A praying church that regularly talks and listens to God, both individually and collectively. A caring church where people of all ages are valued and respected and a place where forgiveness and mutual love prevail. A visionary church, ever seeking to discern the signs of the Spirit's action in the world. A serving church, where people are encouraged to discover and use their God-given gifts. And finally, we pray that we may support and encourage one another and that together we may grow in the unity of the Spirit through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 Amen.
friends, before we sing our final uh, hymn together, In Christ Alone, as I was kind of just sat there listening to uh, Johnny preaching there, um, God kind of brought to my mind the, the part of the words that, that I prayed earlier uh, the, through the covenant prayer. And, and it just struck me that it, it's so relevant for where we are right now. Part of the words that we've spoken are to watch over each other. To journey with each other. To take care of one another. And to walk together before our God. And I love this phrase, in ways known and still to be made known. I think for all of us, the, the future is starting to become a little bit clearer. But there's still a lot of unknowns. And part of what we're doing today is saying, God, we love you. We want to make this journey with you. But we can't do it without each other. And so I really just stress that today, that we continue to watch over, walk with each other as we serve and love our God faithfully in ways known and still to be made known. So it's been a, a, just a, a privilege to share in that covenant service with you this morning. And I hope that you have found it inspiring and helpful too. So we draw our service of worship to a close by singing the great hymn, a Stuart, Stuart Town in him, in Christ alone, my hope is found. Let's sing this together.
Before I draw our service to a close with a prayer, I just want to share this. If you have made this covenant with us today, because we cannot be together, we'd like to know that we're not alone in this, but that you made these promises too today. If you're able to, as a sign that you have covenanted with us today, let me encourage you to share in the comments section below this video the simple phrase that that Johnny alluded to in his message. I am blessed to be a blessing. So in the comment section below this video, if you've shared in this act of covenant today, if you could simply use the phrase, I am blessed to be a blessing. I think that would be a, a huge encouragement to all of us. A moment of quiet as we pray together. Now may the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing that we may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Now to him who by the power at work within us is able to accomplish abundantly far more than we can ask or imagine. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. Amen. God bless everyone. Thank you for joining us today. Stay safe this week and God bless you in all that you do for him. Thank you.